Hey scholars, very good to be back with you and today I'd like to talk to you about I-beams. Now I-beams are absolutely everywhere. Once you know to look for them, you're going to start seeing them wherever you go. Now what is an I-beam? An I-beam, strangely enough, is a beam whose cross-section looks like an eye. All right? Did I mention they're everywhere? Here's the deal. If you look in buildings, like uh, skyscrapers that are under construction, guess what those are made out of? I-beams. Okay, how about bridges? Bridges have I-beams in them. Even airplanes, if you look at the inside of an airplane wing, guess what you see a lot of the time? An I-beam. Okay, so if everybody uses them, there must be something about it. I mean, it's either that or everybody's stupid. Well, probably not, in spite of what it may seem sometimes. Here's the deal. There's an equation that you're going to see in strength of materials if you haven't already. Okay, that means that if you take a, a structure, let's make the structure look like that. Okay, maybe we'll call that element one, element two, and element three. Okay, the area moment of inertia. Okay, now the area moment of inertia is just uh, a measure of stiffness due to the, sh the cross-sectional shape of a beam. Beams have two kinds of stiffness. There's stiffness due to the materials they're made out of. So uh, steel beams are stiffer than maybe aluminum beams, and those are stiffer than plastic beams, if there is such a thing. Um, that's the stiffness due to materials. The other kind of stiffness is stiffness due to shape. Okay, and that's called area moment of inertia. And I wish it wasn't uh, identified with the letter I, but it is. So this is an I-beam, this just happens to be the letter I for area moment of inertia. So there's an area moment of inertia of element 1 plus A1 D1 squared plus I2 plus A2 D2 squared. And we'll, let's maybe put some parentheses around that. Can I get out here? I can't. I'm going to actually step out of frame a little bit so you can, you can get this without me in the way. Okay, this is called the parallel axis theorem, and it's how you assemble the area moment of inertia out of simple shapes. Those, these are just rectangles, and that's I of the rectangle. This is the important part right here. It's the area times the distance from the centroid squared. Well, this is a, a uh, symmetric shape, and we'll call this the elastic axis right there because it's in the center. Now, just to be clear, it's assumed here the force is going to come from the top. We're not interested in the stiffness that direction. We're interested in the stiffness up and down. Okay, and this tells us about that. But see that thing right here? AD squared. There's the area, but D squared? That's the thing we care about. The farther we can put the material from the elastic axis, from the centroid, the stronger and the stiffer the beam is going to be. Well, that's why we do this. These things are called caps, and that's called the web. We put the caps as far away from the elastic axis as we can get them. All right, and so that's how uh, the the the, the uh, rationale behind an I beam. That's why they're everywhere. If you want them as stiff as they can be and as light as they can be, put the material just as far from the elastic axis as you can get it. Well, what if we just put it all right there? And we didn't have any in the middle. Well. It makes that okay, but the problem is there's shear stresses in this vertical part that uh, if, we, if there's no shear strength of the beam, it'll turn out to, it turns out it'll weaken it. So if we start looking, we know where to look, we'll start seeing them everywhere. And the reason we see them everywhere is because of this. This is math. This is the uh, implications of the math. I-beams are math made real. Now, the other night, I was in a restaurant with my family in the local restaurant here called DT Kirby's, which I recommend. Um, and on the way in, there were I-beams in the ceiling. Now, it's made out of an old, I don't know, warehouse, I guess, from about 100 years ago. When you go in, there's an exposed portion of the roof, and it's got three I-beams in them. So, being the, the uh, kind of person I am, I took a picture on the way in, and here it is. Okay, so there's an I-beam. I can't even go out to a, a dinner with my family and not see I-beams. So, here we go. 
I beams absolutely everywhere. The reason they're everywhere is they're efficient, and the reason they're efficient is that the, the um, large portion of the cross-sectional area of the beam is as far from the elastic axis as you can get it. All right. What would be a really dumb way to make a, a beam in bending? How about this? We'll make it like that and make that. Okay. Even if it had the same cross-sectional area of this and assuming the load is from the top, that would be an awful way to make a beam. It's a great way to make a spring, maybe. And leaf springs of cars are too much different than that. They don't have the little knobs on them here. But that's a dumb way to do it because it puts all the area right on the elastic axis and D goes to zero. I don't want D to be zero. I want this number here to be as big as I can get it. So there you go. There is the rationale be behind uh, I-beams and where to find them. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.